Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you all here today. I was walking around. I said to several of you, it's March. I'm excited that it's March. I mean, spring's on the way. That means the snow is starting to melt a, a, a little bit. You know, I know a lot of people like snow, and that's all right. I can still be friends with those people. Because, you know, we can be friends with people we disagree with. Uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to spring. Uh, you know, one thing I'm looking forward to this year that we did not have last year, I'm looking forward to an Easter service. I'm looking forward to celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ together with my brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you're at home, I want you to know you are welcome to join us on Easter Sunday. Maybe that'll be the first Sunday you're back. Amen. Well, we're going to pray for our service this morning that God would uh, make himself known to our hearts uh, this, uh, uh, this particular Sunday. Uh, and we're praying this week, our prayer focus this week is for Paul and Lana Duda. Uh, they are missionaries uh, to Cuba uh, and other countries in, in Latin America. So we're going to pray for them that God would uh, uh, supply all their needs and that as they continue their work as missionaries that the gospel of Jesus Christ would go out wherever they go. So would you stand with me as we pray for them and for our service today. Heavenly Father God, I thank you for your presence already here today. I know you're here uh, because you promised to be here. And God, I just ask that we all have a sense of your glory, your majesty, uh, and your love for us today uh, as we gather here together. Lord, today and this week, we lift up uh, Paul and Lana Duda. God, I ask that you would supply all their needs so that as they minister to the people of Cuba and, and down in the Caribbean, Latin America, God, I ask that you would speak through them so that your Holy Spirit anoints them and that, God, they bring forth great news to people who so desperately need to hear it. Help us remember throughout this week to lift them up in prayer so that we can uh, uh, be encouraged and encourage them. And I pray that you would help us to be missionaries as well to the Merrimack Valley. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, before we begin to watch worship, why don't you turn around, wave, and say hello, and, and show some love to each other. Amen.
a place of praise to stand up on the mountains and magnify his name to tell all the people and every nation that he raised oh jesus is calling me to a higher place Oh, my Jesus is calling me to a higher place of praise. Oh, to stand upon the mountains, gonna magnify your name. To tell all the people, every nation that he raised, my God brings. Oh, Jesus is calling me. To a higher place of praise. Oh, yes, my Jesus oh, is calling me to a higher place of praise. To stand upon the mountain and magnify his name. Oh, to tell all the people and every nation that he raised. Oh, he reigns. Oh, and is calling me to a higher place of It becomes my highest praise when all that I am. God, I'm going to respond to who you are. Respond to who you are. Oh, it becomes my highest praise. Oh, just to know you, Lord. Oh, it becomes my highest praise. It becomes my highest praise. When all that I am, God, I respond. Calling me to a higher place of praise To stand up on the mountain and there I'm going to magnify his name For to tell all the people And every nation that he raised Oh, Jesus is calling me To a higher place of praise a higher place yes, sweet, sweet Jesus we worship you Lord thank you Lord. you are the love of my life you are the hope that trade you for silver and gold. I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. You are, you are my everything. Oh, sing it with me. Oh, you are the love of silver and gold I wouldn't trade 
made you for riches untold. You are, you are my everything. Oh, you are the love of my life. You are. Lord, you desire to abide 
here in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands. So we lift, lift our hearts. And we offer up our praise unto your name. Lord, so we lift our hands. God, we, we lift our hearts. And we offer up. Our praise unto your name. broken vessel. So are you. We as a church, we are broken, but here's the thing that I was thinking as I was singing. We're broken, but we're holy. And it's because I'm broken, I realize there's nothing that in me that's made me holy. It's what Jesus has done for me. My brokenness is covered by his holiness and he is continually fixing me he's building me into who he wants me to be as I surrender more and more of myself over to him you can be seated everyone but part of that brokenness is that we live in a broken world we live in a, in a sinful broken world but his holiness covers us as his children and that brokenness includes our bodies. And our, sometimes our bodies get sick, our bodies get hurt, our hearts get broken, our minds get troubled, our situations get worse. But despite all that, he covers us with his holiness. And he covers us with his, with his healing power. So if you're here today and you need a touch from God, you need a healing touch from God. It's so good to see so many of you here. And I know that a lot of us have, uh, you know, been through the ringer over this last 12 months. And you may still be hurting on the inside. But can I tell you, God is ready to cover over those hurts. Not take away necessarily every situation and every circumstance, but he walks with you through those things. And he shows you his holiness in your own life. So if you're ready to express uh, that relationship with him and seek after a healing touch today can be the day that God's going to do a miracle in your life Pastor Dick and I are going to be up here at the front we're going to be ready to pray for people as Don leads in some worship if you're wanting to someone to stand with you and say I agree with you that God's going to do something miraculous in your life then come on down as we get ready to pray his name we want to continue to pray for those who are watching by television, those that need a healing touch or financial need, or some people need jobs. And, but I'm, again, I'm so thankful that, that there's nothing impossible with God, amen, that we have this confidence, we have this boldness that we can go to him, that he's able to help in a time of need. Hallelujah. He's, his ear is bent low and his hands are extended towards us all the time. So let us agree in prayer for those who need a healing touch from God. Father, we come before you, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus, that name that is above every other name. And Lord, we ask, oh God, that those that need a healing touch in their homes, right where they are, Lord, for you are everywhere present and nowhere is absence. You're right there with them right now. And Lord, we're asking you, Lord God, to let healing flow from the throne of grace one more time. And God, and just touch them and meet their needs. Lord, if it's a financial need, or, oh Lord, or they need a job, or some, some are depressed, or some are hurting today, Lord, let them just sense your awesome, wonderful presence. Let them know, Lord, that hope, that assurance, that, Lord, you have said you'd never leave them nor forsake them, that you'd be with them every step of the way. That, Lord, you're a God who makes a way where there is no way. Lord, we want to thank you right now for what you're doing. Lord, and we're going to give you praise ahead of time by faith because we know in whom we believe. For you are truly able to do exceedingly, 
and abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that is working in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. I'd like to just welcome new folk that are in the house this morning. If you're new for the first time, uh, just put your hand up. Amen. We want to give you a little something. I know on my left, way in the back, some of you, uh, just put your hand up. Anybody that's here for the first time? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Ushers, we want, we want to give you, they're going to come and give you, we're going to give you a, a cup and uh, our daily bread. And you want, to, you want to read this, our daily bread. This is really good stuff. Start your day off that way with a nice cup of coffee. Amen. Praise God. You can't beat that, right? Nice cup of coffee or tea or whatever, but our daily bread, it's just a, a wonderful thing, amen, to start your day off. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good to have you in the house. Listen, give a warm hand of welcome again. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. It's time to dismiss our children as they go to Children's Church. Father, we ask, oh God, that as our children go to Children's Church, Lord, we, that you bless them real good as they learn all about you. We th we're thankful for the, the workers, Lord, the leaders uh, who give of their time, oh God, to, to uh, train our children through the word of God. So, well, Lord, we just want to thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory. And all God's children said, amen. Children, you're free to go. Amen. And have a great time as you learn about Jesus. Amen. Look at that. They're running. Wonderful. Praise, <laughs> praise the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, there's more children. Great. The crowd is growing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory. Amen. Great, 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 great. It's not only, you know, like, like Pastor said, it's March. And in a couple of weeks, you know, it's daylight savings time. And I don't know if you've read the, the weather report, but next week, it's going to be Wednesday and Thursday around 59 degrees. I, I think I'm going to open the pool up. What do you think? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Let me leave you with some announcements. Wednesday night Bible study meets in the White Fellowship Hall each Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. You're more than welcome to come and enjoy the company and learn all about the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Sunday school is available for all for adults and students, grade 5 through 12. That's every Sunday. Amen. Bring your children. Uh, we also have adult classes. Uh, NADA has a class at 8 a.m., correct? Amen. On, on Zoom. I tell you, we, all these opportunities, take advantage of us. You know, we need to gather together. Amen. Praise God. And, and uh, just uh, felt not only fellowship, but learn about Jesus. Network Pastor Nick Fatato will be uh, sharing uh, in the Word next Sunday. Uh, just, you know, uh, uh, he's a, a great man of God, and, and uh, he's going to be with us uh, next week, so you won't, won't want to miss that. Riverside Women's Ministries has a weekly Zoom Sunday school class. Oh, all right. So I got ahead of myself. It made 8 a.m. each Sunday morning. Praise the Lord. A Riverside prayer team ready to pray. And we've been having a lot of uh, prayer requests. Amen. And uh, we're thankful that God's been answering prayer. Amen. And, and that's just an awesome thing to know that we have this confidence, like I said, that we can go to the Lord and he cares about it. God loves you. Amen. God's word says, casting all our cares upon him because he cares about you. Amen. So, and here's uh, where you can go. You, you go to email uh, prayer at riversideag.com. If you have a prayer need, a, a prayer request, and let me give it to you again. That's prayer at riversideag.com. And give your request then. And there's a, a, a lot of people ready to pray for that need. Amen. Whatever that is. So praise the Lord. Praise God. God bless you. Pastor's going to come. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dick. I think when Pastor Dick says he's opening up his pool, I think that means he's inviting us all to come over and swim in his pool. That would be great. Uh, a couple things I, I want to mention uh, before I begin uh, this morning. Uh, first of all, 
uh, I want to encourage you uh, as we continue in our uh, preparation for our celebration of the resurrection of Jesus, our preparation for Easter, uh, as we have decided as a church um, to give up bitterness in our lives uh, for, uh, for our Le this Lent season. Uh, we're continuing to uh, uh, give complain our complaining over to God and uh, replace it with thanksgiving. Uh, we're giving malice over to God and replacing it with grace, giving hatred over to God and replacing it with forgiveness. So I encourage you to continue. I'm praying for you. I encourage you to pray for me uh, as we uh, work on this together. Uh, another thing uh, that I wanted us to do, and ushers, if you'll uh, uh, pay special attention to this, uh, there are so we used to have every other week a food distribution before the craziness of uh, uh, of the pandemic hit about a year ago. Uh, we do have some pre-packed boxes uh, that are available for people today. We ask that you take one for per family. There should be plenty. But ushers, if you could set up some, I, I know they're out in pallets uh, in the uh, fellowship hall. But uh, ushers, if maybe we could get some tables uh, together and, and put the tables up, get those set up and put the boxes there so people can uh, uh, grab those or maybe even put some up on the, uh, uh, on the welcome desk uh, so people can grab those. But uh, just some nice prepackaged, um, fairly, uh, 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 what do you call it, non, uh, things that won't go bad. Non-perishable things, yeah, that, uh, that are there uh, that you can grab and, and take uh, home with you. Uh, uh, so uh, that is, is for you to take and, and enjoy uh, and be a blessing. And uh, like, uh, uh, like we said to the uh, uh, youth group uh, on Friday, if you can take it and if you don't need it, donate it to somebody, man. Give it to somebody. Give it to somebody in your, in your neighborhood, in your apartment complex, uh, or, or in your town. Uh, there are places we can continue to donate and help and be good neighbors. Amen? Uh, Keith Green uh, was a Christian musician uh, and evangelist in the uh, uh, late, in late 70s, mid-70s, uh, uh, in the very early 80s. Uh, and he was one of my favorites. Um, and to be honest, I consider that he was a prophet. Uh, a prophet in that he communicated God's message to power. Uh, and that power was the power of my complacency, the power of my traditions. And he spoke God's truth to that and challenged me. Even when the truth was hard, he always spoke it in love. I admired his faithfulness, I admired his integrity, I admired his skill as a musician. And he continues to affect the kingdom of God now, even 40 years after his tragic death in a plane crash at the age of just 28. And here's one of the songs uh, that you might have heard uh, before uh, that he had written. <laughs> Your face is all I see For when your eyes are on this child Your grace abounds to me and This was the second verse Oh Lord, please light the fire that once burned bright and clear Lord replace the land of my first love that burns with holy fear I remember thinking uh, that this man who I'll be honest, I practically thought of as a saint. And yet this man wrote this song in which he says, God, I need you to replace the lamp of my first love. I need you to look at me and, and see 
that the fire which once burned in me needs to be reignited. And that kind of humility challenged me, and it continues to challenge me. What does the lamp of my first love look like? Does it burn bright with passion? Or is it dimmed with my sense of being satisfied with where I am? We're going to take a break from Daniel today. God is still with us, but I want to turn from the prophet Daniel to a word that just might be prophetic to you today. Would you pray with me? Father, here we are. This is what I have been preparing for. This is what you have led me to. So I give control over to you. Let your word challenge us. Let your word bring us closer to you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. For several months now, God has placed something on my heart. Uh, it's been a source of prayer in my life and, and something that I have shared with, with Pastor Dick. It's something that I've shared with the church board. And in the past, when God has given me a direction for a church, I was really always anxious to go and, and, and share it. But this time, it was a little different. First of all, because these have been hard times. The congregation of Riverside is scattered across the Merrimack Valley. People have been slow to return to in-person services, especially those who are elderly or physically vulnerable. Although many have faithfully watched online from their homes, church is not meant to be something to be just watched. Church is meant to be a community, and it's been difficult for us during this time to be a community. It's been difficult for us to share with each other. You know, I thank God for leaders and medical advisors who have given instructions to us on how to be safe. But let's be honest, this has taken a toll on us as a church, as individuals, as families. It's been hard for me to cast a vision without the ability to see whether that vision is being caught. A second reason that this has been a more difficult word for me to share is that this is a hard truth. It's not something that is designed to make everybody happy. Now, my calling and my purpose as a pastor is not to make everybody happy. My purpose is to make disciples by proclaiming and applying God's word to our church and to our community. And there are plenty of wonderful truths in the word of God that can make you immediately happy. But there are also truths that are hard, truths that convict us, truths that challenge us, truths that will sober us and bring about a godly sorrow in our lives, truths that place righteous burdens on our hearts and call us to work harder. If you're looking for someone to worship who will make you happy all the time, it's probably not Jesus. The only one you can worship will make you happy all the time is probably yourself. I didn't become a Christian for a life of happiness and comfort. C.S. Lewis wrote, If you want a religion to make you feel really comfortable, I certainly don't recommend Christianity. Having said that, Christianity offers us something greater than happiness. It offers us joy. Joy is not dependent on my circumstances, and all my circumstances are temporary. Joy is found in my relationship with God. Joy is, is found in our relationship with our Creator, and that goes beyond my circumstances, because my circumstances don't change that relationship. Joy is found in the security of knowing that even if the world around us is falling apart, God walks with us. He will undergird us with His strength. His holiness. Joy is even found in the correction that God gives us because his correction is an extension of his love and he pushes us toward a greater fulfillment of our purpose and destiny in his kingdom. So having said all that, let me lead you to a place <clears throat> where the scripture is going to open to us a direction that will help us as a church to fulfill our purpose. We're going to be looking at Romans chapter 13. 
Uh, many discussions about Romans 13 were flying around during uh, this last election and during the unrest that was surrounding the transition to the new administration, because it talks about authority. The first part of Romans 13 gives instructions from the Apostle Paul on how they should obey the leaders in their government and how God uses the government for his purposes. And in verse 6, Paul even reminds the Romans to pay their taxes. That's not something that's that exciting. That's not one of those scriptures that bring happiness. Woohoo! It's tax time. But Paul is giving some serious instructions there, and he tells them to pay their taxes. And Paul continues to encourage people to pay their debts. Romans 13, the first part of verse 7, says this Pay to all what is owed them. Taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed. Revenue refers to like local shops and vendors, those, those who you do business with. If you owe them money, Paul is saying, look, you got to pay them what they're owed. And then Paul takes the same principle here and applies it to relationships, because look at what it says next in that verse. Respect to whom respect is owed. Honor to whom honor is owed. Now, look, we're still looking at Romans 13. This is still in the context of those who are in authority, respecting and honoring those who are in authority over us. And the word for honoring here is the Greek word phobos. You know what phobos means? Think of a phobia. What's a phobia? It's a fear. All right? That denotes kind of a fear of punishment. So when he's saying honor to those whom honor is due, he's saying honor through your obedience or else you're going to be punished. But in verse 8, Paul goes beyond just the relationships with superiors, with authority figures. Look what it says in verse 8. Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Pay off your debts. Pay their things. Everything as quickly as you can. But there is a debt that you have that you cannot pay off. And that is the debt of love. You owe love to, and you can never pay that off. You can't get to the point and say, well, I've given them enough love. That was, that was tough. I'm done now. No, you can't pay off that debt. Paul is instructing the brothers and sisters in the church in Rome to say, hey, guys, love each other. A loving community should be the mark of the church of Jesus Christ. And when we show love, we're not only pleasing God, we're fulfilling the law. Look at the next verse. For the commandments... You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Paul is repeating the teaching that Jesus gave, isn't he? Jesus taught that the law is summed up in loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself. Because if you love your neighbor, you won't do anything wrong to them. And therefore you fulfill God's law. And this moves us to God's instructions that have been on my heart for months. Paul has pleaded with the church to love each other. Love, love each other, love each other, love, love, love. And then he says this in verse 11. Besides this, you know the time. The hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The hard truth that Paul gave to the Roman church, God is saying to us at Riverside today, it is time to wake up. We have used the pandemic as an excuse to sleep. I had here, we have perhaps used the pandemic, but I crossed out the word perhaps. 
because it's true. We have used this pandemic, this time of crisis, as an excuse to sleep. Well, this is all so tough. Let me just coast through. We have been in survival mode for too long. Look, we as a church, we've, we've done okay. We've paid our bills. We, we, we've stayed stable. We've even been able to help some families and some other churches and some missionaries, and we've stayed stable. But God is now calling us to move forward. We are closer to the time of entering God's kingdom than we were when we first believed. Time is ticking away, and we have found ourselves comfortable. When Moses was leading the people of Israel out of Egypt, at one point they kept circling this area, Mount Seir. And they were just going round and round and round and round. And then it says this, uh, Deuteronomy 2, verses 2 and 3. It says, Then the Lord said to me, You've been traveling around this mountain country long enough. Turn northward. People of Riverside, my friends, my brothers and sisters, We've been traveling around this mountainous country for too long. This mountainous country of safety. This mountainous country of comfort. We've been traveling around it for too long. God is calling us to turn northward. To move northward to where he wants us to be. The time of rest is over. God is calling us to a higher place of praise to stand on the mountain and magnify his name throughout the Merrimack Valley. And then look at what Paul says next, verse 12. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. There are things that we have that seek to drag us down. Shake off those things. Shake off those things that would pull us back to our sleep and put on the armor that will defend us and show the light of Christ. And then Paul gives a warning. Verse 13, let us walk properly in the, as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, nor in sexual immorality and sensuality. Those are nighttime things. Those are pretty bad things. Maybe you look at those and you say, man, I, I don't do that stuff. But then look at these last two. Not in quarreling and jealousy. All of these things, all of these things in this verse are things which break our community. The community of marriage, the community of family, and the community of faith that we have here at Riverside. So instead of serving the self, so instead of indulging in self-pleasure, Paul gives this final instruction, verse 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Put on Jesus. He's telling this to the church. And maybe the church responded and maybe you respond. Well, didn't I put on Jesus when I first got saved? Isn't Jesus already with me? Didn't I pull him on? Yes, but the fire of our passion and commitment has died down. We need to rekindle the fire. In the book of Revelation, God says the following to the church in Ephesus who had let their fire die down. Revelation 2, verse 5 says, Remember therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. This is what God is calling us to do as a church here at Riverside. Now, maybe your fire is just as intense as it was at the start of your relationship with Christ. But today, I ask you to remember where you were. See how far you may have fallen. And if you see that the fire has died down, if you see that the fire needs to be rekindled, the instructions that Paul, uh, that, excuse me, that John gives to the church in Ephesus are pretty simple. Do what you used to do. 
What is it that you used to do? Seek God at the altar. Pour your heart out to Him. Repent and give yourself over to Him once again. And when we as a church, when we do this together, then the fire which has subsided, the fire that has died down during this time of pandemic, the fire that has become just a little comfortable blaze, will once again burn with intensity when we once again do what we used to do. Give us the willingness to follow the plan that God has for us when we do this, when we do the things we used to do. So how do we respond to this call that I'm telling you God is giving to Riverside today? God is calling us today to wake up, to examine where we are now and to see how we might once again ignite the fire of passion and commitment that we used to have. How will we respond to God's instruction here? First, I want to say this. This is a journey that we're taking. Our relationship with Jesus Christ, it's not a one-time event. We are in a constant state of becoming what Jesus has called us to be. A constant state of becoming a disciple of Jesus. The Spirit of God walks with us. On our journey of growth, he aids us, he comforts us, he empowers us, and he encourages us along this journey. So we will make a response to this call today, here, now. But our response is also part of a journey. We are growing into our passion. We are growing into our commitment. Rekindling a fire sometimes takes some time. The command in Revelation to return to the Ephesians' first love was a twofold commandment. First, he said, repent. That's an immediate thing. And then he said, to do what you used to do. And that's the journey. That's the thing that's going to take a little more time. So we can make a commitment today, and we will. But a commitment has to be followed by action. Or it's just words. So don't expect magical results that take effect with no effort on your part. But do expect that the power of the Holy Spirit is going to enable you to fulfill your commitment that you make and rekindle the fire as you journey with him. Excuse me. Next, let's examine ourselves. Let's examine ourselves. In order to get where we need to be, We need to see where we are. You ever been at the mall? And you go to the mall and there's a directory. And you say, man, I need to get to Walden Books. I just know Walden Books anymore. I need to get to uh, uh, that place where they sell the beanbag chairs. Okay, that's over here. And what what are you looking for? You're looking for the arrow that says what? You are here. Okay, in order for me to get to where I want to be, I've got to know where I am first so I can start taking those directions. So before you make a commitment today to be where you want to be, I'm going to ask you to examine your own spiritual walk with God to see where am I? Are you where God wants you to be? Do you have that same passion that you used to? Does your heart burn like the heart of God for the lost outside these church walls? Does your fire need to be rekindled? These are the questions that I'm asking you to explore today. And God arranged this self-examination at the perfect time. Because today is Communion Sunday. And look at what Paul says to us about participating in Communion. 1 Corinthians 11.28 says, Let a person examine himself then. And then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Paul is saying, before you, before you take this opportunity to remember, before you take this, this sacred occurrence, he says, stop and look and see where you are in your life. Where are you? so that you can do something about it. So here in Communion Sunday, we have this built-in time where we're supposed to be examining ourselves. 
So let's take advantage of that and see how our fire needs to be rekindled. And next, make the commitment. You can't start the journey without committing to move forward. Like God told Moses to stop walking around the mountain and move northward. Our journey to the northern lands of rekindled passion begins with a commitment to follow God's will, to follow the call that He is putting upon our hearts today. So today, after you've examined your heart, I'm going to encourage you to make that commitment, to say to God, yes, I am not where I am supposed to be. I'm not where I should be. But with your help, God, I will be where you want me to be. I will do the things I did before when my fire was blazing with passion for you. And when you make that commitment today, God will not only be pleased, but God commits to you that he will walk with you through that journey. If you've never given your life to Christ before, this can be the time you do so. So examine your heart. Allow the Holy Spirit to show you your need for Jesus. All of us started this life separated from God. Our sinfulness, our brokenness built a a barrier, built a wall between us and God's presence. But Jesus died to take the punishment for our sinfulness. And if we accept his forgiveness, the wall is torn down and we have access to God's mercy and his residence in our lives. So we're going to do our celebration of the Lord's Supper a little differently than we usually do. Now, we're still going to follow the instructions of the Scripture, but we're going to take a little break from our traditional way uh, that we've usually entered into this sacred ordinance. In a moment, Pastor Dick is going to come and read us Paul's instructions on communion from 1 Corinthians 11. And after that, I'm going to pray. Uh, and just, I'm going to give you some instructions now that you don't have to be a member of the church to take communion. You just have to be a follower of Jesus Christ, a believer in Jesus Christ, and you can do that even now. But after Pastor Dick reads the instructions, I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to start playing some worship songs. And during that time, As I start playing, if you need the prepackaged communion cups that are up here, if you didn't bring your own, then you can come down at any time while I'm playing uh, and come down and get your cup. I just ask that you remember to remain six feet distant from each other. But as the music is being played and sung, in this instance, I'm not going to ask you to sing along. In fact, I'm not even going to put the words up on the screen. Instead, during this time when I'm playing, I'm going to ask that you examine yourselves. Just begin to examine yourselves. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you this morning? Do you need to give your life to Christ? Then this is the opportunity to repent of your sins and your old life and say, that's it. I'm going to follow you now, God. I believe in you. I accept you, and he will give you a new life. Or do you need to rekindle the fire in your life? Examine where you are, examine where you used to be, and examine where God is calling you to be. Repent of your complacency and commit to rebuilding the fire of passion and commitment that you should have. Commit, as I have, to doing the things you used to do when that passion blazed. And I'm not, we're not going to take everything together. I'm not going to give you a time and say, okay, now take the bread. Okay, now take the cup. Instead, when you have examined yourself and you, and you see where you are and you are ready to make that commitment to move northward on our journey, then take the bread and the cup on your own. If you want to, during this time of examination, if you want to spend time at the altar, if you want to kneel, if you want to sit, if you want to stand, if you want to move to a place on your own, feel free to do that. But I'm trusting you to maintain that social distancing. But spend the time that is necessary to examine your heart. There's not going to be an official uh, dismissal when you're done with your examination and your commitment and your participation in communion. 
you can feel free to go. The offering baskets will be out there, and you can give the offering then. Or you can feel free to stay as long as you want and pray after you're done. So again, after Pastor Dick reads, I'm going to pray, and then the music, as the music begins to play, you can get your communion elements ready, but take time to examine your heart, and when you're ready, remember the commitment that Jesus made to you by his broken body and his shed blood, and respond with your own commitment as you take the bread and the cup. But first, Pastor Dick is going to come and read the scripture to us. God's word is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting in verse 23. Paul is saying, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Heavenly Father, we're going to take some time and examine our hearts. God, let your Holy Spirit point out to us where we are and where we need to be. Help us to not be rushed, but to take the time to truly search. Allow you to speak to us. Thank you for your sacrifice. Your sacrifice is made available to us this time. Wake us up. Rekindle the fire. Let us be who you want us to be. In Jesus' name. Oh, sacred head. Now wounded with grief and shame way down. Now scornfully surrounded with thorns, thine only crown. How pale thou art with anguish, with sore abuse and scorn. How does that beset language which once was bright as more? What thou, my Lord, hast suffered Was all for sinners' gain My mind was the transgression But thine the deadly pain Lo, here I fall, my Savior, tis I deserve thy place. Look on me with thy favor, thou 
wilt save me to thy grace. What language shall I borrow to thank thee, my dearest friend, for this thy dying sorrow. Thy pity without end, oh, make me thine forever. And should I fainting be, Lord, let me never, never outlive. praise the Lamb upon 
the throne glory 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 to the King of my life, I crown thee now, thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crown brow, lead me to Calvary. forget Gethsemane lest I forget thine agony lest I forget thy love for me lead me to Calvary 